Who will watch The Watchers? That was Roman poet Juvenal. Even in antiquity, abuse of power was a concern. And so when an elite military unit known as the Praetorian Guard began policing Rome, operating like warriors instead of citizens, tensions flared. In times of war, law falls silent. That was Cicero, whose love of the Republic and disdain for militarism influenced America's founders. For John Adams and Alexander Hamilton, Caesar and his proclivity for armed force at home was not a good model for the new world. America wanted to be a genuine Republic, yes, for mostly white male landowners at the time, but devoid of militarism and demagogy. It didn't quite work out that way. And 1967 was a turning point. Newark, New Jersey. A black cab driver named John Smith is beaten by white officers. Word of the incident spreads, riots erupt, and the National Guard is called in. And for the next five days, clashes ensue. A year later, President Lyndon Johnson passes the Safe Streets Act, which enables police to procure military equipment to handle future riots. At the same time, the political language in the United States is changing, and war is now a buzzword. And this administration today, here and now, declares unconditional war on poverty in America. We must wage what I have called total war against public enemy number one in the United States, the problem of dangerous drugs. The war on terror would be a lengthy war, a different kind of war, fought on many fronts in many places. Drugs, poverty, and terrorism were no longer social problems. They were instead enemies on a battlefield, and they demanded a warrior's mindset. Meanwhile, police Humvees and armored personnel carriers started to appear on America's streets. A Clinton-era Pentagon program transferred 4.3 billion of surplus military equipment to local law enforcement between 1997 and 2014. And US Special Forces began training SWAT teams, leaving their mark on police culture and its appetite for heavy weaponry. We, we've got to keep our community safe, our protesters safe, but we also have to keep our officers safe. And it's a very difficult proposition at times. A more militarized police affects everyone, but minorities are the hardest hit, with according to one study, no detectable public safety benefit. And for every 10% increase in the number of African Americans living in an area, SWAT team deployments also increased by 10%. If all you have is a hammer, everything starts to look like a nail. Police brutality goes up, riots ensue, and the cycle repeats. But what if there was a better way? I began with Cicero. There may be a cue from his hometown. Though modern day Rome is hardly a model of public policy, its violent crime rate remains far below the US national average. And part of the reason for that may have been a shift among Italian cops focusing on something called community policing. The idea was to exchange ideas and collaborate with civilians to make their communities safer. Sure, it's been tried in the United States, but it doesn't quite work wearing full battle gear. 